Hello friends and welcome to the Soft Skills channel again. One of the biggest challenges with job applicants today is that their resumes are not filtered anymore by human beings, but by tools called application tracking systems. And as the use of AI is becoming more and more commonplace across all the different industries, these application tracking systems are also becoming AI enabled. But hold on, what does this mean for you as a job applicant? Well, here is the problem. Approximately 70% of the resumes get filtered out by these application tracking systems, which means that the chances of your resume being reviewed by a real human being are only 30%. And of course, these human beings will further filter out those resumes, which means that your chances of landing an interview and eventually getting a job become slimmer and slimmer. But since you are watching this video, you don't have to worry because in this video, I will share with you three things you can do differently so that the chances of your resume passing through these AI enabled application tracking systems is much higher. And watch till the end because I will share with you the example of my own resume, which I've reformatted based on some of the tips and tricks I'll share with you in this video. And we will also look at an example of a job description from LinkedIn and how I have customized my resume for that specific job. My name is Jamil Hai, and I've been working in management positions across South Asia, Middle East and North America for the last 20 years. And my mission is to help you build real life skills for your job and career that they don't teach you in college. But before we proceed, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that like many other subscribers I have, you can also benefit from the content I post weekly on this channel. The first thing you have to do is keep your format simple. I know we would all love to see our resumes like the one that you see on the screen right now. Glitzy, glamorous, lots of different tables, graphics and so on. But trust me, this is not a format which is a good friend of these AI enabled application tracking systems. What these systems like is more a format like the one that you see on the screen now, which is much simpler, easy to read and in more or less like a standardized format. So there is no point on spending a lot of time on design tools like Canva to design your resume. Don't get me wrong, I'm a big fan of Canva. I use that a lot for some of the other stuff I do for my channel, but to make my resume, I don't need something as complicated as that. So just use Microsoft Word or Google Docs because the format that you're looking for can be easily made in these and it will also make your life easy. Another point I mentioned earlier briefly, but I want to stress on it is use a single column format versus a tabular two column format. The reason is that although the two column format looks better overall in terms of organization, a lot of times these application tracking systems find it hard to read resumes which have basically tables in the background. And even with this two column format, there is actually a table which is working in the background. That's why you see one column of summary and the other column of details. So try to stay away from this two column format because this will increase your chances of getting past these AI enabled application tracking systems. And just to further build on the formatting point, try to stay away from things like tables, text boxes, logos, images, graphics, columns, headers, footers, all of these things make your CV look very nice aesthetically. Don't get me wrong here. But to get passed through an AI enabled ATS, these are all not your friends because some of these ATS systems don't even read headers and footers. So it doesn't really matter what you put there. And it's harder for them to read graphics because most of these systems are designed to read words. So there's no point in putting graphics. Similarly, tables and columns, like I mentioned earlier, are not great tools to use here as well. Also for your main headers, try to stick with the conventional headings like work experience, education, certifications, and so on. Don't try to come up with new words because that will also confuse some of these systems. And also with the font, sometimes you really want to find the most unique font because our CV will stand out. Well, that's a bad idea. Try to stay with more conventional fonts like Arial, Times New Roman and so on. Because remember, the goal is not to make you happy with how nice and shiny your resume looks, but it is really to get it passed through these systems. And if you really want to play with the formats, here are some of the tools that you can use. You can, of course, use bold, italics, underlines, colors, bullets. These are the tools that are available in even the basic software like Word and Google Docs, like I mentioned, and they are more easily understood by these systems. So try to stick to those. The second tip is to customize your resume for every single job that you apply. A lot of times 
companies are looking for very specific skills and these AI bots are trying to find those specific keywords as well. So as an example, let's say in your resume, you have mentioned the word collaboration, but in the job description, there is a mention of teamwork. So try to replace collaboration with teamwork. Although one can debate that collaboration and teamwork is not exactly the same, but in this case, you can replace these commonly used keywords with exactly what is mentioned in the job description, because that is another thing that can maximize your chances of success here. Similarly, in the job titles as well, there are a lot of differences. So one good idea is to try to stick with generic job titles, but if you are applying for a specific job, what you could do is you can look at the job titles that are used by the job description itself and maybe your company might be using a slightly different job title so you can replace it on your resume. A very good example is from the world of procurement. So a lot of times companies use the job title buying manager, but maybe the company that you're applying for is using the term procurement manager. So you could replace buying manager to procurement manager, although there are subtle differences, but you could make those changes because those are more used by the company that you're applying for. Another good example is that some companies may be calling the head of IT the head of IT as a job title and in other companies it may be called chief technical officer or CTO. So once again try to adjust it accordingly. And now let's look at the example of my own resume which I have formatted based on some of these basic guidelines that I've shared with you. So here you can see that uh, my resume is basically in this one column formatting that I mentioned earlier. It's very simple, it's a two page resume. Uh, by the way, I also made a video on the, the do's and don'ts of CV writing in which I have covered how long your resume should be. Uh, so you can watch it. I will put a link on the top right uh, of this video as well here. So you can uh, watch for more details on, you know, depending on the level of experience that you have, you could either have a one page or a two page resume. I strongly discourage resumes more than two pages long because nobody reads it. Uh, and I think even from this AI uh, application tracking system perspective, it's a good idea to keep it short and sweet. So in this resume, you can see that I've got my name on the top with my contact information. Then I've got a summary of my overall experience with some of the keywords which reflect my uh, skill in different areas of supply chain uh, and remember this section i've not put it in the header this is in the main body because as we said headers are sometimes missed out by these uh, ai enabled systems uh, and then i've got my work experience uh, always go in chronologically in the backward order so start with your most recent experience first uh, and uh, go backwards so here you can see i've got all my experience listed out here and then at the very end i've got my ex uh, education and certifications so uh it once again i'm going backwards so with my latest uh, education or certification and then i'm going all the way back to my university also uh, keep in mind that there is no point in mentioning your high school or your elementary school nobody is interested in that so if you are uh, a fresh graduate just mention uh, the information about your degree and the university and so on. Uh, there is no point in mentioning high school details uh, because they are kind of irrelevant. And now the next thing that we will do is I have taken a job description for one of the jobs I looked at on LinkedIn and I've picked up certain keywords which I will adapt to my resume. So as you know, when you go on LinkedIn, you can type your specific keywords uh, of the jobs you're looking for and where you are looking for. So in this case, I'm looking for a supply planning director job in the United States, and then it gives me the list. So from one of these jobs, I took the job description and I copied it uh, over here. So you can uh, see there is some overall introduction about the job. But here is the key, look at this. I have highlighted all the keywords which are mentioned maybe in different words in my resume, but it's the same. So this company is calling certain parts of, let's say supply chain or certain jargon of supply chain differently than what my company calls it. For example, they are calling SNP process, which is supply network planning process. Uh, we call it by a different name in, in my company that I work for right now. 
similarly they have put a lot of emphasis on network rccp so uh, i have uh, extensive experience in managing rccp which is rough cut capacity planning so i will make sure that in my resume when i customize i make a mention of that because i have currently not mentioned this as as one of my key areas where i've worked uh, similarly it mentions uh, uh, manage business rules and planning parameters including safety stocks and inventory targets once again this is something which i've not explicitly called out in my current resume but given that this is called out as the first bullet point in the supply chain optimization section i will make sure that in my resume uh, I, I call this out uh, clearly uh, similarly in supply chain synchronization they are talking about multi echelon so i'll make a mention of that they are talking about uh, another uh, acronym which is very commonly used in the world of supply chain snop which is sales and operations planning ibp is the integrated business planning process so i will mention this is as well in my cv because uh, we we call this a, by a similar uh, title uh, but i will make a mention of this as well um so here are some examples basically which i wanted to show uh, which you can use as a good reference point now what i've done if i go to my customized version of the resume so here you can see uh, there was a mention of uh, team management in that resume as well so here i had line management so i've replaced line management with team management as a keyword uh, i had supply planning mentioned so i've just mentioned supply network planning snp i've put it in parenthesis because this is an acronym which is being used by that other company uh, and similarly in this section or uh, where i have the experience of being a supply chain director i've uh, mentioned the 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 same terms uh, around planning parameters safety stocks and inventory targets because i know that i'm confident once again the idea here is not to just put skills that you don't have the idea is that if you find skills or experiences which the other company is referring to by different terms you adapt them the uh, the point i really want to emphasize is there don't put things that you have not done so uh, if you haven't done something just because it's the job description of the uh, uh the company that you're applying for uh don't just put it so just try to be true to yourself because once again like in all my videos i i mention a lot about being authentic so don't lose that uh so you can see as i scroll down uh i have uh, supply network planning mentioned here network rccp because and i've kind of mentioned like you know i was managing network rccp for three factories at one point in time in jeddah cairo and dubai so i've mentioned that so you can see overall you're not changing a lot but you are just making it more relevant for the job you're applying for so i hope you found this video helpful i've also made videos on how to answer tough interview questions like what motivates you or what is your salary expectation which you can watch by clicking over here